Hi, I'm Sandy Alnock, author of Bible Journaling Made Simple, and I wanted to show you how I made the cover of the, the book itself. This is the page that's pictured on the cover, and I'll be journaling in Isaiah chapter 61. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. And I'm focusing, focusing on clothe me in a garment of praise, making a prayer out of that portion of the whole verse, with these beautiful flowers that are also pictured in the book. And this text, I actually set on my computer and traced it onto vellum paper. You could also do that with tracing paper. And I can see that just barely through my Bible paper. And I'm going to trace it on there with a pencil, just so I kind of get that in place. Now I have a technique for transferring all these flowers on there. Once you get the whole thing laid out, and I have a sketch that you can download in the description down below if you want to copy this one. But I'm just going to cut out a stack of sticky notes, just you know, a couple of them, one for each flower, and make a little triangle with a rounded side on it. And with each one, they're going to fit as the flower heads. So I'm going to place the sticky notes, make sure you cut it so that there's some sticky in the, the triangle that you're cutting. Place the sticky notes where each of the flowers goes. You can rearrange these flowers any way you want. You don't even have to use my sketch. They're real easy to do. And I'll show you how easy they are when we get started. But these are going to serve as what's called masks. Masks hide the things that are underneath of them so that the paint won't touch them. I'm going to use some watercolors on this. You could use other mediums as well to do something similar. And these are Daniel Smith watercolors. They're artist grade, which means they're going to last longer. And I had somebody recently ask me about why it would matter since the book is closed, that they are artist grade, which means they're light fast. They're going to last a long time. And for me, it matters because I'm hoping no one ever throws this Bible away. And I would like it to be around in 100 years. And if that happens, I don't want the colors to fade. And with some of the cheaper kind of craft grade watercolors, that may happen. So I use my, my Daniel Smith watercolors. I will have more tutorials on how to mix colors and how to set up palettes and stuff that I would recommend for Bible journaling. This is my artist palette. You don't necessarily need quite that much. But what I've done is mixed up puddles of paint, and then I'm using a baby wipe to apply the paint. Notice there is no brush in my hand right now. I am just using a baby wipe. I have a number of videos on this YouTube channel showing things like that, but... This is just another way to do it. I'm masking out those triangles. They're not going to have paint in them because all the color is going on in the background. And that's one way that you can create masks. You can actually cut out masks of all different si shapes and sizes. You can punch circles and stick those on and then have a, a pattern of circles and you can layer them on top of each other and all kinds of really fun things that you can do that are really inexpensive. That's what I focus on here on my YouTube channel, is stuff where you don't have to go out and buy a ton of things. And you can use any watercolors to do this, even though I'm using my fancy Daniel Smith ones. All, all different watercolors will work. Just make sure you test them out so you know if they're going to bleed through the paper or not, because I know that is upsetting to many of us. And continue to finish out this section down here on the left. Notice that I do have a sheet of copier paper underneath. That just protects from getting the paint dribbling down the side of the, the Bible or, you know, ex excess paint applied elsewhere. And it also just serves as a, a way to keep some of that moisture up on top of the paper. But when I'm applying it with a baby wipe instead of with a brush, I'm getting not very much water on there. If you paint this on, you're going to end up with a ton of water on there. That's just the nature of paint. Is your brush has to be wet enough to move it. But once all the paint is on, look how I can peel these up for the great reveal. And now all of my flowers 
are knocked out of that background and they're all going to be able to be beautiful white ones. I can take a sheet of that same copier paper, put it on top and with a hot iron, just iron it for 10, 15, 20 seconds or something. And you can experiment with how wet your paper is and how long you need to iron it. But if your paint is still puddled on there, then wait for it to dry a little bit before you iron it because some of that pigment could transfer onto the front of, of that copier paper. I also iron the back just to flatten it out as well in a different direction. And now I can start adding in my flowers. So I'm mixing up some blue paint and I'm gonna paint each one of these. Now this flower in particular is shown in the book just in a couple little still pictures. It's really hard to kind of teach you in still pictures how to do much. The book was challenging for me to do in that way because I like showing you on video so you can see it actually happening. But here I can just paint little splotches of color. And don't worry, I will zoom in in a moment so you can see a little bit better. I just wanted you to have that bird's eye view first of how I'm creating that light color with almost stippled dots on the, the top portion of the flower and then blend that down to the bottom of the flower. So here we are, zoomed in a little further and I'm just skittering around with my brush. And I'm using silver brushes. The, the brushes that I like are by a company called the Silver Brush Company and they're black velvet line. They hold water nicely and these brushes have lasted me years. So they're a good investment if you're looking for a decent brush. If you're gonna be doing a lot of watercolor, then that would be great. Always make sure, by the way, that you dry your brushes flat. Don't stick them in a cup turned up upward because when that water comes down into the brush, it's going to actually make your bristles fall out. <laughs> so you don't want that. So I'm gonna continue around all the rest of the flowers, literally just painting some color on the top portion with almost dots and then laying that brush down to spread that color out just a little bit on the bottom and then dab off a little bit with a baby wipe so I don't get blobs of color. This is the first layer at kind of the bottom of it. And while all that is busy drying, I'm using some thicker paint to paint my lettering and just tracing over what I've got. It is hard to do. I'm just gonna tell you painting text is incredibly difficult and I don't do it very often for that reason, but I'm trying. I thought it would be fun to do for the cover and try to see if I could make something that looks like the fancy lettering that everybody does. I'm not good at that. Like I said, I had to trace that from text that was printed out of my computer that I had to typeset myself. So, I, I'm not all that great at that. I have a class called Typography for Bible Journalers. And if you're interested in learning my way of doing kind of cheater typography, then you can take a look at that because it's a lot more interesting than watching me try to paint letters traced from my computer. So now I'm adding an extra layer to my flowers. And you can keep layering your watercolors over and over and over again to get deeper and deeper colors. But I'm adding more stippling onto the top of the flowers and then more color down the base of the flower in that whole top triangle. And then just doing a couple of petals, like one petal on each side, just a line along each side, and then make a stem coming down. And if you've already done a sketch for it, or if you're using the sketch that I've already provided in the description down below, then you kind of know where your stems are gonna be and where your leaves are gonna hang out at but you can adjust them as you go since you don't have pencil lines in here, you don't have to follow pencil lines. So if you decide you wanna make a different leaf come in from a different area, then you can do that. Really easy, easy to do. So for each one of my flowers, I'm just going through and painting the leaves and the stems, adding a little bit more color onto the tops, but notice that I'm not doing as much. I'm not repeating the color. So then I get a layer of dark on the very top and then it, it has a lighter layer behind that, and it just builds up that depth very slowly when you start doing it in layers. And as I get heavier color in one area or another, I might dab things off to just kind of lighten that up a little bit. And now I'm going in with another layer. And you can continue to do this and add all kinds of little lacy detail onto these flowers. And I've kind of called them a thistle-like flower just because I don't know, that's what came to mind. It's not a real flower, it's just a fun, very simple flower based on a triangle shape. 
super easy to do and doesn't require huge drawing talent. But I can add more deep color into the base of the flower. So put some thicker paint basically way down at the bottom and let it slowly work its way up and up toward the top of the flower and add more color into the greens as well. And all of this just for me goes really well with clothing me in a garment of praise. What, what I think of when I, I read Isaiah 61 is the number of times that God has asked me to praise him in the hard times. And there's a lot of hard times and a lot of sorrows that are talked about in that verse. But that garment of praise, that sacrifice of praise is what we give up. We give up our whining and we, we just go for the, the praise and we praise God in the midst of everything. And that to me is crucial in our journey with the Lord. So I hope this video has been helpful for you. Feel free to click the like button if it was, share it with your friends, and then go try it. Pick a verse that means a lot to you that you'd like to put some flowers on and try the technique out. And I will see you guys again in the next video. Bye-bye.